And there I was. I was the girl from Suits. This one's wife, Zara Tyndall, questions the pregnancies. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The pregnancies of this one's wife would merit their own volume, such as the level of observation and speculation about them. Essentially, one can divide the positions into three particular camps. First, those who believe that she became pregnant by Harry, carried the children, gave birth to them. Thus, their children are Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet. A second group, who believe that the children exist, but she did not give birth to them. That in actual fact, surrogates provided the children. They're Harry's, but not hers. There's no shame in surrogacy, but as I've explained elsewhere, this could well be problematic for a narcissist, not least with regard to the issue about being born of the body in order to be within the line of succession, something that would be important to a narcissist that would regard the children as an extension of themselves. The third group believed that the children simply do not exist. There were no pregnancies, there were no births, there are no children. And the children that have been seen in photographs and filmed footage are actually the children that belong to other people, hence they're hardly ever seen. Whatever your stance may be, it's safe to say that there are countless hours with regard to speculation in relation to the issue of the children and the pregnancies. Many people talk about the fact that the children are rarely seen, the fact that this one's wife does not behave in a maternal way with the children, see parts passing for why that is. Many have pointed out the different positions, that the bump that this one's wife had during her pregnancies, that it had differing positions, that it flattened, that it was high, then it was low, then it appeared to drop. In some instances, people have pointed to the fact of her ability to squat whilst heavily pregnant, not something that ordinarily can be achieved. There are also certain discrepancies with regard to the recording of the birth and the announcement of such, the recollection from Harry with regard to the age of Archie and so forth. Accordingly, all of this is amassed in there being a lot of speculation about whether the children exist and whether the pregnancies actually took place. So far, there has been no definitive exposure of this. Nevertheless, Zara Tyndall purportedly has addressed the question of the pregnancies. Video on a channel called Royal Trend states, Zara Tyndall has called out this one's wife's fake pregnancy in an interview on Mike Tyndall's podcast. Zara Tyndall, the royal family member and equestrian champion, has taken to the airwaves to make a bold claim during a recent episode of Mike Tyndall's podcast. Zara alleged that this one's wife's much-discussed pregnancy might not have been entirely genuine. This revelation, coupled with purported leaked evidence, has reignited the public's fascination with the Sussexes and the controversial departure from royal life. Zara's remarks on the podcast suggest that there may be more to this one's wife's pregnancy story than meets the eye. She hinted at inconsistencies in this one's wife's narrative, suggesting that the details surrounding her pregnancy and the subsequent birth of her children could be fabricated or exaggerated. This assertion has raised eyebrows and reignited discussions about the credibility of the Sussexes, particularly given the couple's history of controversial statements. While Zara did not provide specific details on the leaked evidence during the podcast, sources close to the royal family have hinted at documents and testimony suggesting that this one's wife's timeline regarding her pregnancies may not align with reality. It's very clear that the Tyndalls are trusted and fully a part of the royal family. Never forget that scene at the top of the steps of the cathedral after the Platinum Jubilee service, where Mike physically stood guard over the, over the Harkles and Zara distracted them with chatter while they all prevented a pap walk or other public display from the Sussexes, ensuring that they got down to the car and out of town so everyone else could go on to enjoy their lunch together. This one's wife and Harry have zero accomplishments. Their only hope at fame was Harry standing a sixth in line to the British crown, and then they didn't even succeed in selling out the royal family for money. They could have just tried to build a brand that wasn't based on the UK royal family. Nevertheless, 
they enabled the first nominally biracial woman to marry someone in the line of succession, but she treated the monarchy as her own marketing tool. And, since they hold themselves out as victims of narcissism, maybe if we all promised to cry for them, they would go away on another note. The Tyndalls get love while the Harkles get hate. The Tyndalls were hanging with Elsa. It states in this video that they remember that this one's wife probably hoped to get a beat picture of her posing with the Hemsworth brothers while in Australia. So once again, she loses. More interestingly, the Tyndalls seem to be reconciling Australia to the monarchy. It may be some more optimistic reporters, but still, whereas the Sussexes seem to attract hate from Down Under, and the Tyndalls actually have made money from their endorsements. Mike and Zara are both charming and accomplished. Mike himself seems to blend well with the family based on how he played with Prince George during Christmas Walk and how he consulted James during the Queen's funeral. One can't imagine Harry and this one's wife doing any of those critics, doing any of those things. Critics of this one's wife have long pointed to her dramatic claims, particularly those made during her interviews with Oprah Winfrey and others as being calculated moves designed to garner sympathy and attention. Zara's comments add fuel to this fire, providing a fresh lens through which to view this one's wife's narrative and further challenge the authenticity of her experiences. This is a three-minute video that actually leads with the title of Zara, Tindo, Zara Tindall calls out this one's wife's fake pregnancy over interview on Mike Tindall podcast with evidence, but typically of this type of channel, it doesn't actually provide you with any evidence whatsoever. It simply says that Zara Tyndall has called out the fake pregnancy in an interview and then adds nothing more, just fleshing it out in relation to explaining the relationships between the Tyndalls and other members of the royal family and so forth. The video has acquired several thousand views and there are those that clearly believe its content. In the comments, somebody stated they needed to be arrested and taken to prison. Somebody else, why are those names in the line of succession if the fake kids don't exist but profit from titles? Another states, Mad Megs had a hysterectomy when she was 19. Ask her father who paid for it. Another writes, I can't understand why this liar, this one's wife and a delusional husband who is also a liar, why have they not been arrested for defamation of character? I think they mean defamation. Well, you can't be arrested for defamation of character. It's a civil claim. But the point is this. This information appears nowhere else. It's not reported on in mainstream media. It's not reported on across social media. It's simply, once again, one of these channels that regurgitates nonsensical information, lies, and presents it as a truth in these short videos. They're viewed several thousand times, and it's evident that people believe them. And of course, channels such as Royal Trend and others that I've mentioned to you before keep on churning this type of information out. I've made it clear why this is dangerous, because it pollutes the, the clear and credible evidence provided by other YouTubers. But I thought it was worth highlighting this instance again, because it's another attempt to suggest that Zara Tyndall has been speaking her mind. While she is a forthright individual, she has been within the royal family for years, and she understands the necessity of discretion. While she undoubtedly will have her private views about Harry and this one's wife, there is absolutely no way she would air such private views on her husband's podcast. And to state these observations, as this video has done, is clearly defamatory in relation to Zara Tyndall and also in relation to this one's wife. And it is a dangerous game. I repeatedly highlight this because it is important for people to go to the evidence and recognise that there are these videos that people are accepting at face value and they ought not to do so. It's important for people to remember that a whole industry has sprung up around this one's wife. There are many people around the world who are very interested in what she's doing. It has become woven into part of their daily lives, whereby they will watch videos, they will comment, they will discuss the situation in particular forums in relation to the latest activity of this one's wife. In a way, it's their kind of entertainment, and they're perfectly entitled to do so. However, 
Unscrupulous YouTubers have recognized that they can make a considerable amount of money by regurgitating lies, coming up with preposterous theories in relation to this one's wife and the world around her in order to get those views. And it is particularly the case when this one's wife isn't as industrious as she ordinarily is in courting public attention, that these particular YouTubers find that there is less material available to them. There are those that investigate the evidence, that they join the dots and present theories which are invariably supported by evidence. Those channels undertake meaningful work in relation to highlighting the activities of this one's wife and Harry. Others parody the way that they behave, taking the piss because there's so much to take the piss out of. But many channels become little more than gossip places. Now, if somebody is enjoying having a chinwag about, could it be this, could it be that, then that's fair enough. It's the nature of social interaction for many people. But what often happens is that there are many who have no access to any information whatsoever, and rather than analyse what is going on from a particular position, for me, I look at it through the lens of narcissism. That's what it relates to. For others, they will look at it with regard to, is there an agenda, for instance, to attack the freedom of speech, to silence critics? There are others that want to determine, did the pregnancies actually occur or did they not? Because that impacts upon questions in relation to the line of succession. But there are others who basically end up inventing information, speculating on very little whatsoever, for the purposes of ensuring that they have something to talk about, because otherwise they wouldn't have anything to talk about. That in the early days, there was so much material about this one's wife, and it was all fresh and new, that they garnered quite the audience. And now, when you're seeing the same behaviours over and over again, and there's less fresh information coming out from this one's wife, it becomes harder for them to maintain those views. And thus, what they do is they invent things. The problem with this is that it gets repeated by so many individuals that it almost becomes canon information about them. And this is dangerous. It also means that people are less likely to critically assess the information and ask themselves, could this actually be true? The consistency by which this information is put forward means people accept it at face value, and thus they deem that it is true. This is problematic, not least because it presents a false picture, but it also means people aren't thinking. They're not critically assessing information. They're not going to the evidence. And in a world where you are given so much information from so many sources, it is more important than ever for you to challenge the veracity of the base information, that you determine, is this replicated elsewhere? Does it come from credible sources? Have I seen any video evidence that supports this suggestion, or am I just relying on hearsay? Too often, so many people simply accept what they are told by a supposedly reputable re YouTuber who has invented the information, or may have taken it from somewhere else, without offering the caveat of, of work this out for yourself as to whether this is accurate information, it's presented as is as if it is gospel truth. I regularly encourage you to assess the veracity of the information upon which I then provide you with analysis vis-a-vis -vis narcissism. It's important for you to do so, and I repeatedly identify channels such as this royal trend, which pump out errant nonsense because of the dangers of doing so that I've highlighted previously and need not repeat. It also leads into a potential, even more dangerous issue, which I'm going to talk about in a forthcoming video today. I'm H.D. Tudor. Thank you for listening.